day everyone and um welcome back to my channel on this um beautiful may 22nd 2023 it is 11 56 a.m i hope that everybody is doing great in today's video we are going to talk a little bit about what i spoke about in my last video and we are going to go into the subtle aspect of our world and what we consider the parallel worlds when it comes to when it comes to religion i want to talk a little bit about this because i want to share my perspective on this matter when i woke up in 2013 I asked everyone that wakes up okay I woke up with the simple fact that I needed to keep the Sabbath and I woke up with the simple fact that I needed to be obedient to the commandments those were the basis you go out and you start looking into this world and you start moving around and you go into religion then you start to recognize that they don't hold the sabbath that they don't hold the commandments that to them these two things don't exist and the majority of religion are going to tell you that the Sabbath has been abolished. Then you start to go from one place to the next as a person that is thirsty. But not thirsty for water or food. Thirsty to find the word. To acquire knowledge then you walk into the door of religion and what the different types of religion are and you explore them only to find out that what you are seeking is not found there then you walk out of that door and you say to yourself hold on one second there's something wrong here do they not preach salvation do they not ask for the souls to come to the universal name all of these religions have one thing in common whether it is Pentecostal Catholic Jehovah Witness Mormons, um, Seventh-day Adventists, the Adventist Church, they all have one thing in common and they're just a few of the titles within religion but they are all under one universal name and they preach that name and then you start asking yourselves if these people preach the same name why do we need so many denominations why is there so much division why is it that the seven day adventists that quote and quote they hold the sabbath they observe the sabbath why is it that they won't share their day with those that are wanting to observe the Sabbath why is it that you have to be invited you start to recognize that the path of salvation is not found in religion and that's the determination that I came to acknowledge that is the truth that I had to acknowledge that my salvation is not found in 
religion, nor in a church. That was really devastating for me because of the simple fact that I felt alienated from the rest of the world. Like I did not fit in because I'm trying to be obedient to the word, but I'm finding out that the world is not obe obedient to our Heavenly Father nor to His Son because the world does not know Him. Yet, I knew that there was something wrong, but I didn't know anything else. Then I started to ask myself, The letter J is no more than 600 years old. How can a man that lived over 2,000 years ago be named with a name that the first letter of the name didn't even exist during his time? Where's the Hebrew origin of our Messiah? Because we are under a Latin worship, which is the universal power. It is impossible for one to possess a name that did not exist during your time. Therefore, are we provoking the wrath of our Heavenly Father Yah by our actions? Something to think about. Because as I stated, I did not find none of these things in religion. As a matter of fact, I was told we do not observe the Sabbath. And the Ten Commandments are for the Jews. Yet, there are ten tribes that have been scattered all over the world. And our Heavenly Father is not coming to save Puerto Ricans or Americans or Haitians or Dominicans. No. The 12 tribes of Israel translates to nations. That means multitude of people. Yet, we want to talk about this and we want to talk about that, but we do not want to face the truth. And we are going to have a problem with deception if you cannot come to terms with the things that are being presented. The evidence is overwhelming and we cannot deny it anymore. We just went over a period of 4,000 years. And this is the chart that I presented to you at the beginning where I told you that this is where I was going to go. So, we are here. Finally. Part 8. Subtle. This is the title of the video. So we have the dark side, which we just went over. The seed of the serpent that murdered the seed of the woman, which was Abel. We see that on the darkness, we have the external aspect of human, of a human soul. We are talking about souls. We got the cycle of violence that comes from the darkness. We have the unconscious and the unaware that comes from the darkness. The non-humans that come from the darkness. We have the symbol which is where we are heading. We got the supernatural real that comes from the darkness. We have the 
beast system, which is your triple six, which is representing a man, which is under religion, which is going to lead everyone into bondage because six times three is 18. And 18 is the number for bondage. And this is a bondage system. Because if you got to mark people and they have to worship and it's an obligation violating our free will, then this is bondage, what we are approaching. We have the mark, the name, and the number under the symbol. We'll get to that. Majority of you don't know what this is, and unless you are into the Bible, you're not going to know. So, over here we got in the middle. We see the upside down pyramid, which is the esoteric, the cabal, blood cannibals, rituals, and the darkness. We see this is hidden. Okay? This is the darkness. And we see the upside down, the upright pyramid, which is what we see in the physical world, which is the fake light, blood, esoteric aspect, rituals, um, Zionism, Judaism, and uh, the synagogue of Satan, which is what we see. Everybody knows this because it's in the light. But we got the middle right here, which is look and see, and then we got the overlook. Mind, condition, fame, money, blackmail, propaganda, Religion, politics, rituals, bloodshed, control, violence, abuse, lies, and deception are all in the middle of the tree, which is the inversion from dark to light, which we're going from dark into light. So is the enemy. And then we got the overlook, which is the duality world under 616, which is number 13, which is the enemy, which is what we have been seeing Every atrocity, apostasy, depravity, and rebellion comes from him because he is the first. So we are establishing that the darkness is compatible with non-humans and the tares. We are also establishing that the light, which is where we are heading, we're going from dark, which is the first 4,000 years, into the light, which is Jehoshua, salvation. We got the conscious, which is the aware. We got the internal. We see the murders and bloodshed that is plaguing our realm. We are under the upright pyramid. We are the human, the soul, which is what the light represents, and the weeds. Under this, we got the natural realm and the world that is not being touched by human hands meaning that this is the world that exists as it was created by our heavenly father which is what we see in the light as birds the trees the plants the fruit and the trees that bear the seed that brings forth the fruit every year without having men to do absolutely nothing this is where we are this is the chart of know your enemy we're looking at two paths we're looking at a path of destruction in darkness, and we're looking at a path of salvation. This is the door to religion, and this is the door to salvation, as we are in the 2000 years, where the Holy Spirit guides the believers, and we are saved by faith. Therefore, we know that we are walking in the light and in the truth of the word, according to our Heavenly Father and His Son. That's not what we see in the darkness. The darkness is full of deception, alluring that there's two paths going on here. If the whole entire world worships by one universal name, then you need to ask yourselves, why do we have so much division? Why can it not be one single religious entity under Jahushua? Because one is coming in the name of the Heavenly Father, Jehoshua comes in the name of the Father, and the other one comes in his own name. This is why we have a discrepancy with names. Yet, they're not using the correct name. And we have to establish that. 
here comes wisdom because the letter J is no more than 600 years old. How can a man who lived over 2,000 years ago possess a name such as Jesus, Isis, or Isa us that did not exist when our Messiah was walking the earth and preaching and being with the disciples? Therefore, the world is lying to you. And which part of the world is lying to you? The darkness, the esoteric aspect. They have attempted to apocryphy everything, hide it away, put it away, and only a, a select, you know, books that they can tamper with, that they can manipulate, are the ones that are being put forth. But in reality, one of the apoc apocrypha books is the book of Suzanne. And you need to take a look at that book. I will put it under the description box so you can read it. But not, nonetheless, the book of Suzanne speaks and gives a perfect account as to what bearing false witness is all about. And what happens to a person that you are bearing false witness to. And it's a perfect example of what happens to those that bear first for false witnesses. As the wages of sin is death. And that is one of the Ten Commandments. Therefore, this is a perfect example. But upon reading the book, I cannot find one single thing that would make this book an apocrypha. Or any need to hide absolutely nothing unless they are hiding the simple fact that you are not supposed to bear wit false witnesses against thy neighbor or against another person. Or the simple fact that this bearing false witness has a lot to do with the simple fact that these two men lusted after Susanna and they wanted to sleep with her. So they corner her and they say, sleep with us or we are going to tell a story that you fornicated with another man and we are going to bear false witness against you. Nonetheless, the truth is the truth and it stands for the Holy Spirit gives testimony of us. Just as the Holy Spirit gave testimony of Susanna and it gave testimony that these two witnesses were lying. This is what the world is and this is what the world is doing. Yet, we want to defend names. We want to go against other people. Don't insult other people's intelligence. Do not insult or undermine the research of another person. Because in reality, that takes time and that takes knowledge. That's not ignorance. To be ignorant, you need to do absolutely nothing but continue to follow the religious murderous path of the occult, which is what religion is under. Religion is esoteric in nature. That means as they do above, they do below. They Below they serve Satan and they render, they render him worship and they sacrifice. And above, they sell it to you as the light. But you need to ask yourself, who is Jesus? Because he's not a Messiah. But we understand that the world has two paths. There is a path of the seed of the serpent and there is a path of the seed of the woman. Therefore, we can successfully understand that the devil has its own image has its own name by which he is going to deceive the world nonetheless our heavenly father gave us his only begotten son that died for our transgressions we are looking at the darkness and the light and we are looking at the inversion Let's go into subtle. There was a TV show by the name of Tales from the Dark Side. That TV show was one that I was really like glued to the TV. It used to come on on Saturdays at 11 on Channel 11 back then 
And I remember that the intro, I was a teenager, but I remember that the intro gave me the chills. And I never could really get over that. Both the intro and the ending just gave me the chills. And I started to ponder on these words. And I started to say to myself, hold on a second, there's something here. Because these words, it, they, they hit me. Like, they really hit me up to a point that my soul is telling me that there's something here that I'm not quite understanding. Nonetheless, I decided to look into this and I have been working on this for a very long time and in connection to the chart and everything else. So I want to bring forth the information that I found when I started to dissect these words and I started to put a message together so that I can understand it, so that I can explain to us. But this has a lot to do with our world and the esoteric and exoteric aspect of what is being perceived and shown versus what they are hiding. So let's go into it. I'm reading from my notes because this is my research. So we got here, the parallel worlds are ones that are unseen while the others are seen as we live in an unconscious state as conscious the aware and the non-aware we see this right here the unconscious the unaware conscious aware we see the internal the external we see the light we see the darkness this is what we're talking about. We see that this intro contains sublo tales of the dark side turned into a series called Tales from the Dark Side. So we see that the intro contains syllables that tells the tales of darkness or this dark side here darkness so we're being told a story to this darkness unfortunately when this TV series came out none of us knew anything about this this did not exist in our minds therefore we're being entertained but we are being told truth so this series was turned from these tales of darkness into a series that is called Tales from the Dark Side. So the opening intro goes as follows. Man lives in a subtle world of what he believes to be a reality. So man lives in a subtle, 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 S-U-B-T-L-E, a subtle world of what he believes, what he perceives, to be a reality, right here. Everything that we see, we take it as reality. But we are oblivious of the unconscious and the unaware. We are just in the conscious and aware. We are physical. But this is the spiritual. So this is what it's talking about. It's talking about that other side. So, men live in a sub or subtle world of what he believes to be the reality or his reality but there's an unseen by most an underworld a place that is just as real but not as brightly lit which is the dark side it's right here light darkness The ending of the TV show goes as follows. The dark side is always there. Has always been here since the beginning of time. Waiting for us to enter. Waiting to enter us. So it's waiting for us to go into it. 
and it's waiting to go into us. Until next time, try to enjoy the daylight. To the Irish individual, this means absolutely nothing. But to the person that is awoken and in the spirit, this is a warning. It's a warning that there is something that we are oblivious to. But it is affecting our reality. And it is interacting with us. Yet, we are unconscious and unaware of it. Let's go into the keywords. The keywords are subtle. S-U-B-T-L-E, dark side, belief, reality, and underworld. We are going to dissect those words. Subtle, S-U-B-T-L-E, adjective, meaning not immediately obvious or comprehensible, difficult to detect or analyze, often thought of being delicate or highly refined. The dark side. Not immediately understood. Not it, it's not obviously comprehensible. It's very difficult to detect or analyze. And it's delicate and or highly refined. When something is refined, it means that it has gone through a process where there is no nutrients left. When you take an oil that has been refined, Let's take olive oil, for example, which is a base oil. When we take that oil and we heat it up and we refine it, that means that we have extracted all the nutrients. It's voided of anything that is good and beneficial. Refining in our modern day society when it comes to food is not good. It does not contain any nutritional value. It means that it has been overheated up to the point that whatever benefit it, up, it had, it has been taken out. Where it's just an oil, has no flavor, probably it has no smell, and there are no nutritional values embedded in it because it has been refined. There is a difference between refining and unrefined. Yet... When it comes to the spirit of our Heavenly Father and us, He is shaping our character. He is refining us. He is putting us through the fire. But the refining of the world, it's not an equivalent. So, we need to understand the difference because the world is mimicking everything of our Heavenly Father and of His Son. Excuse me. When it comes to the subtle scent, Showing or making or capable of showing or making find distinguishment of meaning. We have often spoken about the language that the darkness uses to communicate with the light. This includes numerology, color coding, and symbols. These are the characteristics of evil. For normal people do not use those type of communication. Therefore, is subliminal in nature and it is hiding something. The majority of us would not necessarily interpret, understand, or see that aspect of it unless we are in the know as we are in darkness as opposed to the darkness so we don't see it nobody sees it if they did then they would understand that their flesh and their spirit is one of the same but we have no connection to the spirit because we are unaware of the unconscious aspect of us the sort of world Describe as a non-physical realm of consciousness full of beings and energies that exist alongside the physical realm. The natural spirits, the angelic, the intelligent, the souls of the dead humans amongst others. Disembodied spirits, the demons and everything else that comes with the darkness and the 
um, what we would consider the sub the subtle world, which will be under the supernatural realm, which really comes from the darkness. Something that is subtle is not immediately understood. It's not obvious or even noticeable. This means we are unaware of its true meaning and its true intentions. The subtle message that the world uses. These will be labeled subliminal messages. This is a technique used in marketing and other media forms to influence people without them being aware of it. In other words, this preys on the unconscious mind. So, this will be found here in the world. It would come from the media. It would come from those that spend money on propaganda or on reshaping the minds and the thoughts and redirecting them. So, we know that this comes from here. But, this message is not being straightforward and is often being used as a technique and a marketing in media forms to influence your persuasion, your thought, your view, and it preys on your unconsciousness. So that means you're not aware of it. But yet, your unconsciousness is looking at it. it. It perceives it. It is acknowledging it. Excuse me, my dog's getting wet. Sorry about that. We're expecting rain this whole week, and it was raining, and I forgot my dog was outside. But anyway, back to this. So, we're not aware of it, but yet, our unconscious sees it, picks up on it. And whether you want to believe it or not, it can impact, it can influence, and it can cause behavior problems basically because we're kind of being manipulated without us being aware of it we see this in our world it's there to be seen so in other words this preys on the unconscious mind or even what the message is all about we must see it but not understand it or dismiss its content without awareness. This technique involves the use of split-second flashes of text, hidden images, and or subtle cues that affect the audience in a way and at a level below consciousness or awareness. So that means that even though we are witnessing it, we don't perceive it, we don't acknowledge that it, we are unconscious of it and we are unaware of it, yet we are absorbing it. But the average individual doesn't know what they are being presented with. We're looking at that in this world. Other words for this technique are unintelligent, dull, idiotic, obtuse, gullible, unknowing, undiscerning, guileless, and in judious and judicious judicious in judicious we see that none of these words are positive so we know that it's praying on the simple fact that we do not understand it what is the subtle communication a subtle communication is a domain of writing that includes sub text, wordplay, ironic symbolism, a be cute and references, the literal content of metaphor, emphasis on speech. There can also be considered a change in meaning and emphasis created by timing and modulation when speaking to someone in person such as facial expressions and body language which are Keep revelant into understanding the message. Excuse me. It's 
it's raining hard. Seriously, oh wow. Okay, so we know that when we are talking in person, one on one with someone, we know that facial expression is very important and we know that body language is also very important because it, it has a lot to do with how we perceive the message and how we receive it. If you are asking me if this is a good thing, then this would depend on how you see it. So let's go into this. Being subtle is often an effective way to communicate according to them because it is a natural human tendency to resist anything that we perceive to be negative. No, it's not. It's natural. It's natural. It's a natural mechanism. So that means that they're going against that natural mechanism that we have when somebody comes and tells us, oh, let's go out and rob a bank. We know not to do that. So we are going to decline. It's a more extreme, um, it's a more extreme example, but this is more or less what we're talking about. So we know that it is in our nature to resist anything that we perceive to be negative, evil, wicked, and wrong. Therefore, they're coming against that. But by using the subtle technique, we can ensure that people will consider what's being said rather than rejecting it altogether without any consideration. That can be given to an individual okay that is bringing forth a message but that cannot be given to the world where the world is literally being subliminal and coercing us feeding us but targeting our unconscious which is not good because that means we're not aware of their schemes and we are easily manipulated and subjected to whatever it is that they want to do with us and in reality we have a free will so we know that this is evil this is a way to violate our free will by being subject subjective this is also the reason our children are lost in this world without transparency and no truth they can't violate our free will but they can get us to consider things that otherwise we would not the most famous of from the most famous for doing such practices is the fake media while some low they promote depravity instead of justice it is a vicious cycle of lies and mental manipulation through these techniques they expose their intentions but we can't understand it as we are unaware of their true intention because it's feeding our unconscious it's a one-on-one -on -one message with someone that understands what they're saying but not for the majority therefore deception follows they need us to consider things as they want to condition us into accepting those things that are settable and thinking about things that are not pertains to our life so they want us to consider things that really don't have absolutely nothing to do with our lives and they should not be there this is what evil does and we see this character in the world therefore anybody under this character has got to be the seed of the serpent we got the subtle thinking capable of making or noticing find distinguish in meaning and symbolism this can only be accomplished through knowledge on the intent on those given the message and where it comes from what what's its purpose and objective this requires a thought process not indoctrination let me give you a perfect example of a subtle thinking back in 2001 i would have to say 
that about 10 out of 20 people that I spoke to said that they did not believe that it was an outside source. We knew that there was something wrong. We knew that there was a lot of confusion. We knew that they were doing an exercise at the same exact time that this was being taken place. So we know that we are going to be confused. So we are looking at an event. We are feeling that it's not right. And we are thinking that this has more, there's more to this than what meets the eye. But yet, we are in the subtle. We do not know its true identity, its true intentions. We don't know its true meaning. But yet, we recognize that there's something wrong. We recognize that something is just not right with this whole scenario. So, this is a perfect example of what it is. You feel something is wrong, but you don't know exactly what it is. But you see where it's coming from. So, this is exactly what it is. When it comes to the meaning of the dark side, the dark side is the accountable and the unaccountable, plural, dark sides, countable, the, the side of something that is in darkness or unlit, unknown, or has less illumination, quotation, countable, figuratively, the side of something that is metal, metaphorically dark, the side that is evil. Right here. We just... We just went through it. The darkness that feeds the light. So that means that the darkness has agentors in the light. And it feeds them. There's a communication going on constantly. But to the average individual, we don't know what it is. We are unaware of it. Examples of the dark side. Egoism. Machivialism. Narcissism, psychopathic, sadi sadi sadism, spitefulness, and others such as psychopath, multiple personality traits are all part of the dark side of evil, which resides in the darkness and hidden. It is also include includes any and all traits that stand for male malevolent spirits of darkness and resides in the dark side of human personality and character. I told you guys, psychopath, sociopath, and narcissists are dangerous people. We went over that. We are confirming. What emotions lead the soul into the dark side? Fear. Fear is the enemy, no the enemy of knowing. Knowing is lack. Fear is darkness. When you fear something because you lack knowledge. If you take... I'm going to stop right there. Because I'm going to share something that I have never told anybody. Okay? And I'm still trying to come to terms with this. Because it's still as disturbing to me. As in the day that I was feeling this way. Throughout the whole, my whole entire 50 years of existence, there's one movie that I can tell you that even now, if I am to see it or watch it, I am going to relive what I used to live through my childhood. Some people are afraid of certain things. Whether conscious or unconscious, there has to be something that is triggering that fear if you are afraid of a movie there's something there because it's a movie okay well i was not afraid of the exorcist that's not the movie neither was it aliens neither was freddy cougar or jason nope the movie that frightened me the most was the movie Halloween. One time, when I was 
six years old. My dad was watching that movie. And I woke up in the middle of the movie and there was like other people there, okay? And I woke up in the middle of the night or whatever. Um, and I remember that I started crying hysterically. And I kept telling my father, not that, not that. Take it off, take it off like that. And then I used to run to my dad's room in the middle of the night because I used to say that that man in the movie was in my closet. It's something psychological here. What is it? Why am I afraid of this movie? What is it about this movie that bought that feeling? Why am I afraid of this man and why am I looking at this man in my closet? It's a psychological thing going on. There's some type of trauma. Whether somebody scared me and you know with a mask, whether I've seen something, I don't know. I, I still don't know. Of course, I don't feel as scared of the movie as I once did, but this is a perfect example of what fear does. And that's because you don't know that that's a movie. You do not differentiate the difference between reality and what is fiction. Children don't have that capability. A six-year-old cannot tell the difference between a boogeyman on a TV show and a boogeyman in real because they're going to consider it the same. Scare is scare. Being scared and being fearful is the same exact powerful feeling. So this is a perfect example of what I had to do. I had to come to terms with this, so I had to seek it out. A lot of other things came out and all this, but I started to understand why. And it was attributed to a festival that happens here, which is the Day of the Innocent, which these people use masks the same as the one Michael Myers was wearing. And there was an incident where these people were coming down and the lights went out. And when the lights went out, I started to scream. Then all of a sudden, I see this man standing next to me with this mask on. So you know I was screaming louder. I heard my dad say, please don't scare her. And then my dad came and grabbed me. But I think that those Minutes of trauma having this man in the darkness with this mask caused some type of psychological damage where I can trace it back to this movie and this movie brought fear to me. Remember, I was six years old. So, this is a perfect example of fear. Fear is the opposite of knowing. When you know something, when you know what it is and what it means, you are no longer going to be afraid of it. Therefore, Fear can be combated with knowledge. So, let's go into it. Excuse me. Construction, rain, helicopters, you name it, I am in the middle of it. Let's continue. Okay. Fear is the path that leads to the dark side. Fear leads to anger, rebellion, wrath, which leads to hate, resentment, and bring forth evil hatred for the suffering of one's soul. This is a spiritual torment, just as I was experiencing. It's spiritual because I didn't want to sleep on my bed. I wanted to sleep with my dad, and I often used to take my pillow and my blanket and I used to lay down in the floor right next to my dad's bed and that's where my dad would find me. But nonetheless, there was a fear. So, let's go into belief. Belief is defined as acceptance of something. Belief to be true or sacred as a truth. The feeling of reassurance of the truth as one believes. To hold something as an opinion to think or to suppose. To accept truth, ideas as real. To regard the existence of Yah as a fact. 
to believe in Yahushua as true and to accept him as our Lord and Savior and to believe it with our hearts. That's belief. Okay? As opposed to what men believe, that he lives in a world where it's peaches and cream. Reality as it is defined, the word, the world, or the state of things um, as they actually exist, as opposed to an idealistic view or a notion, an idea of them. The state of quality of having existing or having substance. Reality in life. Reality are the things in life that are commonly observed and verified to exist. Things that are cons consistent or mass hysteria that may be perceived as real and or physical as experiences by the senses. Objective reality is the gold standard of a scientific standard for what is real and we know that science is in opposition to our heavenly father subjected reality is per perceived it's perceived the reality of an individual that which one can phantom perceive or experience is what is believed to be real for this vantage point a multitude of realities can exist simultaneously Rel relating to the mind and determined as the subject of experience is the subjected reality having characteristics of belonging to reality as perceived rather than as independent of mind relating to or being experienced or knowledge as conditioned by person or mental characteristics intersubjective reality defined as a shared perception of reality between two or more individuals the term presupposes that we as humans being cannot know reality except through our own senses and experiences sight hearing smell taste and or tactical feeling my people perish for lack of knowledge they don't know their enemy therefore they're not living in reality most simply stated as the interchange of thought and feeling both in conscious level and in unconscious level between two persons or subjects as facilitated by empathy empathy meaning the ability to understand and share the feeling of another the ability to understand another per person's thoughts and feelings in a situation form the point of view rather than your own so it's their point of view rather than your own three types of empathy Cognitive empathy, the ability to understand another's perspective. Emotional empathy, the ability to physically feel what another person feels. Empathic concern, the ability to sense what another person needs from you. And the world and meaning. The word of criminals and or criminal organization is the universal meaning of underworld. But that's not what we're talking about. The mystical abode of the dead. More like it. Imagine as being under the earth. The mythological aspect of this world. Consider myth. A place under the earth where the spirits of the dead go. Compared to Hades and scriptures. Underworld meaning in substure. Sub, oh, in scriptures. Sheol is a Hebrew word in the Bible. As is a place of still darkness which lies after death. The subterraneous underworld where the souls of the dead went after the body perishes or dies. Considered to some as Abraham's bosom and others as hell or Sheol. The prison of the souls whether for good or bad is a place responsible for holding the souls of those whose time has come and gone. The underworld controls over the earth riches. It is said that Hades is the ruler of the underworld and he possesses and controls all the riches that are found around within the earth. This includes both natural rich riches as well as very riches. He is considered the wealthiest and the richest of the god demons of them all. The meaning of natural realm. Whatever is naturally occurring in nature and whatever is created by men, men, women, animals, fruit, birds, etc. 
the meaning of the supernatural world. This term is attributed to the non-physical, such as entities, angels, demons, gods, spirits, disembodied spirit. It is also included claim abilities of embody in or providing by such beings include, but not limited to, magic, telekinesis, levitation, precognition, extrasensory, or perception. This only may include the parallel words that make up the unconscious part of men, which un is unseen and unknown to us. So let me read that again. This also may include the parallel world that makes up the unconscious part of men which is unseen and unknown to us. The unconscious part of men that is unaware. So we are here, but we're feeding this, but we're unaware of it. But this is our spiritual self. Therefore, we lack spirituality. Therefore, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You don't know yourself. So you are being easily manipulated. Supernatural is defined as caused by forces that cannot be explained by science, such as demons and evil spirits, as they are supernatural in nature. They not of our physical realm. So they are not on our physical realm, yet they can cross over. And we're looking at these interactions with these demonic entities, but we cannot cross over to them. Therefore, we share our parallel world with these entities, and we've always been. No two ways to look at it. They've always been here. In scriptures, the meaning of supernatural as it's defined by beyond and above, the, nat the nat natural or nature. The realm of the supernatural is the realm beyond the reach of men and human explanation. It's beyond comprehension. This realm is the realm of Yah, our Heavenly Father, operating in the realm of heaven and earth, intermingling with the realm of interactive between Yah and men. Our spirituality. I told you this is a one-on-one -on -one thing. Why is humanity so easily subjected to subtle and overlooking things? We overlook things and disregard them in part due to lack of understanding and or knowledge. We try to deceive ourselves and pretend this may be largely attributed to the lack of meaning and connection we may put on things. At that moment, our brain cannot connect, so we overlook them and disregard them. This is in itself dangerous, as we may fall prey to the devil's scheme when we do not pay close attention to what is going on. This goes for every level of communication and even when we read. We must always be aware of any form of manipulation and coercion that will go against free choice, free thought, and a free action as we have free will to choose. The techniques of subtle or and or subliminal often lead to views oneself as a split personality as we believe in the physical while rejecting the non physical which we are sharing with these things so by acknowledging the conscious and the awareness we are living in the physical realm which is the physical flesh but by rejecting to recognize the unconscious and the unaware aspect of the darkness that plagues us we are feeding into it for we are subjected to its schemes and its deception as we share these things with this non-physical world we know that we can't perceive, yet they are there, but we don't perceive them. But yet, they still manifest, leading one to deny the existence of demons, entities, while waging war against the spiritual aspect of ourselves. This is due to the lack of knowledge, as we are unaware we are spiritual beings, having a spiritual experience 
experience. Therefore, we lack understanding that the spirit and the physical exist even if we do not acknowledge them. As our Heavenly Father, Yah exists despite many not being aware. This is the light and the darkness that are interchangeable. They are internal and external. They are aware, unaware, conscious, unconscious, esoteric, esoteric, inner, outer, interchangeable, entities, connected. They roam and inner feeling or a voice view as acting as a guide to the righteous or the wrongness of one's behavior. This is the light. The darkness, the part of the mind which where which are, is unaware of, but which affects behavior and emotion. Darkness, external, internal. The unconscious versus the conscious. And the aware versus the unaware. The esoteric, the hidden versus the esoteric. We see that it's aligning perfectly with our chart. not made by men the natural world the real the will of my heavenly father light belonging to or forming the outer surface or structure external of something external also meaning arising or acting from outside an external force the environment, it's in its natural form. All living and non-living, living things occurring naturally. This is the external of the internal aspect of us. Overlook, fail to notice, a commanding position or a view, ignoring and disregarding, faulty or offensive, subtle, ignoring the lacking experience, lacking knowledge, on the matter this will be the overlook this is why we overlook we fail to notice we fail to take into consideration we are unaware the supernatural realm considers the manifestation of events attributed to forces beyond our understanding external the overworld feature of something situated outside part or or beyond situated near or toward the surface of the body manifestation or even considered to be outside of human intellect or consciousness considered supernatural in origin such as demons and supernatural demonic activities beyond scientific explanation um under understanding and or of the law of nature and not explainable such as the supernatural realm which is also in the dark aspect of as it feeds the light but the supernatural realm can also be considered the natural realm of our heavenly father as the supernatural realm has to deal with darkness the natural realm of things deals with the light so we see an opposition here between these two external forces you know trying to, uh, to mimic the same exact thing therefore they are foreshadowing things of their own but in opposition to the true light so we see that the supernatural realm will be the realm of demons, but it will be under our Heavenly Father as the things of our Heavenly Father are considered supernatural in nature, as opposed to the natural world and the natural realm which contains our Heavenly Father and His Son all over it, okay? But at the same time, it, it is the will of our Heavenly Father. So we see that we are dealing with two realms, okay? Not only that, um, they are inter interchangeable or intermingle with our reality, with our world. So external, we are external, internal, they are internal also. So it's just like they can come over to our realm, but we can't cross over to theirs. Therefore, they are disembodied spirits and they have no rest. They're demons upon earth looking for a host, looking for people, looking for chaos, looking to do damage. They're nefarious in nature. 
when we start to analyze the modification of the world versus the spiritual refinement and the test of fire then we start to analyze that we th there's two forces at work here therefore just as we see darkness and light there is the the darkness of the kingdom of the enemy and there is the kingdom of our heavenly father it's a path we are looking at two choices the same thing that we see with modification which is the test of deception versus the test of refinement and the test of fire let's go into it a little bit spiritual refinement or a treaty of grace assurance where in handling the doctrines of assurance the use of signs and self-examination how through grace we may be distinguished from the counterfeit several to spiritual signs and many through spiritual mockery and false signs as Zacharias 13 9 and I will bring the third part through the fire and I will refine them as silver is refined and I will try them as gold is tried they shall call on my name and I will hear them I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God yeah yeah uses our trials to test us and to test the reality of our faith in a similar way to the process of purifying precious metals yeah ordains trials to test the reality of our faith in a way to the process of purifying precious metals we will be put through the test and trials we will be tested our faith will be tested our behavior will be tested our character will be tested our belief will be tested our love will be tested our loyalty will be tested our morality will be tested our virtues will be tested and all our experiences will help us during the testing process and the knowledge that we have acquired in the words will be our comfort in those times we we were ourselves feel alone and abandoned no we are being tested and we know what and our heavenly father knows what you can bear never lose faith and never doubt your faith for every for even in our darkest moment Jehoshua is our light with this I confirm that there is no trial known to men that Yahushua did not overcome. Therefore, he is our strength and in him lies the power to rebuke demons in his name, to heal the sick, and to bring comfort to the hearts of men and to comfort each other in the love of Yahushua. So I tell you, comfort each other in the love that is eternal and unconditional. For we live by faith. Jehoshua is our Lord and Savior. He is our Redeemer. And He is our Savior. In comparison to, to the test of deception and the demonic modification that the enemy is doing. As in the days of Noah, so shall also be in the coming of the Son of Men. The modification is the origin of the word in Scotch to French to Latin to English to late century 15th century in Scotch Lord denoting the assessment of a payment accountability of soul from French or from Latin modification modification English translated the work of the world are death the world is under spiritual death the world wants to modify your mind your body and your belief while our Heavenly Father wishes to refine your 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 spiritual self so that you may be found worthy in the sight of the Lord this is the difference between modification and refinement how is the world modifying the souls of men through adaptation through adjustment through correctness by customizing you by repairing and re reshaping your beliefs and re routing your words to align with the world's views not your own these are the sentiments of modification as for the sentiments of modification are of a variation or indifference and changing that shifts beliefs a man's faith and alters it into a false belief adjusting our minds and conditioning it bringing it to submission to do the bidding of evil versus the will of Yah this is the curse of those who willingly accept the opposition consider thy ways people who are cursed walk in opposition to the will of my heavenly father this goes both ways for people and nations 
Therefore, I tell you, know your enemy. This is mine over will. We see that this is beautiful. Nonetheless, it brings the chart to life. For we are looking at these things. Yet, the majority of persons cannot understand, nor do they know that their unconscious is being targeted. And they are not aware of it. What is the unconscious at this point? Your spiritual self. Which is what darkness wants to hold in bondage. And this is what they are coming. Right now there's a power shift going on. From darkness to light. And we are going to see a fake light rising up. And the scripture tells us that when they say safety and security, sudden destruction will come to those as a woman in labor pains. So we know that everything is aligning perfect. Right now, upon doing all these all this research and upon bringing all this forth I am at the point where religion and politics are derived by the same entity therefore they were once united they are going to unite again nonetheless this is about worship this is about DNA and this is going to lead into worshiping the beast and his image. So you have a choice. So let me present you with the choice. The door of religion, the door of Yahushua, you have a choice. The door to salvation, obedience, faith, the good tree, the seed of the woman. Yahushua comes in the name of the Father. Religion. Mary worship, the triple six, abandon all faith, the Tau, door of the nation, the image of the beast, name, image, and number, the tears, the rosary worship, the blasphemous name, which is profane, rebellion, apostasy, depravity, bad tree, the seed of the serpent, comes in his own name. Where do you stand? And it's no coincidence that this door is in darkness and this door is in light for we are dealing with light and darkness we are dealing with Yahushua that is the truth and the light and the way to salvation and we are dealing with a religious power under an image under a name by which all the entire world worships yet they are divided who are you worshiping at this time if you are in this door Come out of her, my people. Come out of her so you are not partakers of her sin. So you are not partakers of the wrath of our Heavenly Father. Satan is the wrath of our Heavenly Father. He's going to be sent to destroy all those that go against. Consider thy ways and be wise, my friends. This is not the door to salvation. This is the door to religion and a curse and damnation. And deception. The door to salvation is not found in religion. It is found in Yahushua. He's the light, the truth, and the way. This is a one-on-one. -on -one. This is through obedience. This is through the Sabbath. This is through the Ten Commandments. Where's your loyalty? And who do you stand? It's time to make a choice. Because you're being lied to. 
Nonetheless, it doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what you are defending. The truth is the truth. And it is going to be revealed. Nonetheless, those that persecute the seed of the woman is because you are of the seed of the serpent. Because the true seed of the woman is going to seek it out. It's going to take it up with our Heavenly Father. And it's going to put it into practice. Nonetheless, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Bottom line on that one. With this, I end. It's time to make a choice. Where do you stand? Do you stand with Yahushua and the door of salvation? He comes in his Father's name, our Heavenly Father Yah. Or are you standing with religion? And are you standing with the one that comes in his own name, which is a blasphemous name and is profane? Take your pick. It's your choice. Salvation is extended to every man. And by forgiveness and by asking to be forgiven and by repenting is how we acquire salvation. Nonetheless, pride goes before destruction and a prideful heart before a fall. There's no in between here. So what is the difference? What is the difference? This one is under a trilogy of evil. There's no trilogy here. It's our Heavenly Father, His Son, and the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth is one of the same with the Father. For the Spirit of Truth comes from Him. It's not what this door is telling you. This door is under a trilogy of evil. Yet, that trilogy is three demons. Not only that, but they depict it. Because they are idolaters. And idolatry is something that we are looking in the whole entire scriptures from the beginning to end. We are looking at idolatry. And we know that our Heavenly Father hates it. Yet, this is an apostate church. It's unfaithful. It's under apostasy, depravity, and rebellion. It's an opposition. It's an inversion of the truth. This is an inversion of the truth. Do you understand the implications of those words and what it means? Until next time, everyone take care. Much love from me to you all. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate your time. Time to come to the truth. Nonetheless, the truth is being exposed. But it's up to everyone to come to it and to accept it and to seek it out. I will see you all soon with part 9. This concludes part 8. And sublo, subtle. I have, a par, I have a problem with pronunciations. But I'm going to blame that in the Spanish and English brain I got where it tries to think in one language when I'm speaking in another. And then it tries to think on another language when I'm speaking on another nonetheless. The message is understood and that is the important part thank you for joining me everyone and have a beautiful day i'll see you all soon enjoy